National Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Before I was a private detective, I was a cop. Homicide. Working out of the 5th Precinct. Homicide means murder. And there are a lot more murders committed in the big city than you think. More than make the headlines in the newspapers. And for everyone, there's the same impersonal routine, the same hard work, the same check and double check, with every cop in or out of uniform doing his best to put the case in the closed file. But there's one kind of murder that will really tear the department to pieces, and that's when a cop is killed in line of duty. Here's another exciting half hour with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, if your husband's dead and you pull the trigger, Diamond will help, but the fee is bigger. Hello? Oh, Rick, what can I say? Hello. Hello. Oh, no, that's nice. Now try Hello, Rick. Hello, Rick. Oh, dandy. Call back tomorrow and we'll start on Hello, Rick. This is Helen. Oh, <laughs> you idiot. Hi, baby. Hi. What's doing? Oh, I was just a little lonesome. Wanted to know if you were coming by tonight. Oh, you know it. Should be there around 8. How about a little... Hey, Rick, what's that siren? Is there a fire? Hmm, could be. Sounds like it's pulling right up here in front of my building. Wait a minute, I'll open the window. Now, Rick, if there's a fire, you'll get right out of there. Honey, if this building caught on fire, I'd be Mr. Unquentine of 1950. Well, what is it? Hmm, ambulance. Oh. Oh, and here comes a prowl car. Must be a traffic accident or something. Well, thank goodness. Well, somebody probably playing in the traffic. Oh, Rick. Okay, okay, some guy forgot to step down getting into his new Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I make remarks like that. I'm not trying to be... I... Oh, wait a minute. No combination, friend. Just turn the little old knob and push. Who is it? Somebody at the door. Well, Pop. What? Pop Scholes. Oh, the nice old blind man who sells pencils on the corner. Yeah. Hello, Pop. Hey, please, Mr. Diamond, I've got to talk to you. I ain't got much time. What does he want, Rick? Oh, to talk to me. I'll call you back, dear. Bye. Bye. I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Diamond. Well, not at all, Pop. Not at all. What can I do for you? I can't stay long. I have to hurry, but... I was wondering if you'd come to my place later on. It's pretty important. How important, Bob? I can't explain now, I, but I got a big trouble. I, I sure could use some help for old time's sake. Huh? Sure, for old time's sake. Where do you live, Pop? A little shack on the waterfront, end of River Street, 622 and a half. When do you want me to come down? About an hour. Uh, I got to be going now. Okay. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Pop. Here, let me give you a hand. Thanks. I, I could make it with this stick, but it takes time. I ain't got a lot of that. Now, there you are, Pop. See you in an hour. Thanks, Mr. Diamond. Name's Rick. Okay. See you in an hour, Rick. Hmm. Miss Asher's resident. Oh, uh, hello, Francis. Mr. Diamond. Oh, yes, sir. I'll call Miss Asher right away. Thank you. Rick. What? Oh, Walt. Yeah, mind if I sit down? No. What are you doing down here? Hello, Rick. Uh, hold the phone, honey. Came down on a homicide. Homicide? Oh, that squad car right in front of the... Right in front of your building, yes. Shooting. Well, what are you doing up here? I'd done all I could down there. Rick. Uh, just a minute, baby. Thought you might want to hear about it. Bill Walton. What? Friend of yours, wasn't he? Yeah, a darn good one. Hello, Rick. Somebody put three slugs in him. Rick, I can hear somebody talking. What's going on? Oh, I'll call you back, baby. What? Helen? Yeah. You know, I worked with Bill on a robbery for three years. Got any idea who did it? He left the robbery detail two years ago. Been with the narcotics division. Haven't checked with them yet, but he might have been working on something. Might give us a lead. You want to go down to the station with me? Yeah, I'd like to. Okay. I've got some witnesses to the shooting. They'll be down there for statements. Bill's got a wife and three kids. Yeah. Well, aren't you going to lock the office? For what? Even a termite's gag on the furniture. Let's go. 
Well, that's the way a quiet day could work, work itself into a lot of trouble. And like always, if trouble's around, yours truly is bound to get a chunk of it. Walt and I went downstairs, climbed into the prowl car, and ten minutes later we were walking into the squad room of the 5th Precinct Police Station. The first thing I saw was the zoo's best argument for not taking in boarders. Uh, Lieutenant, I got statements from all the witnesses. You want to talk to him? No, he thought he'd read their palms, Sergeant. Oh, Lieutenant, what did you have to bring the shamus along for? Just relax, Otis, and Rick, you lay off him. Well, I wouldn't need him if he'd just stop that terrible habit. What habit? Living. Oh. Come on, Rick. Oh, look at that wall. Four heads and they all need haircuts. Come on, Rick. Come on. This is a swell time to make jokes. Can you think of a better time? Okay, okay, okay. Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. Send in the first one. Then check with narcotics and see what Bill Walton was working on. Right. Boy, I hate things like this. What about his family? Oh, I know all of them. I guess I'll have to go over and tell them. First one, Lieutenant. Uh, Arthur Phillips. Go on in. Uh, come in, Mr. Phillips. Oh. Have a chair. Yes, okay. Uh, look, I don't know much about this thing. Mr. I was Diamond, just on... Mr. Phillips. How are you? Uh, how do you do? As I was saying, you I don't... You saw the killing, Mr. Phillips? Yes, yes, I saw it. It all happened so fast that I don't think I can really be... What were you doing when you saw the killing, Mr. Phillips? Uh, walking. But I walking didn't see... Walking where, the... Mr. Phillips? Uh, up the street to my office. Oh, look, I, I gave your sergeant my statement. You'll find it What's all in order. What's your business, Mr. Phillips? Insurance. Liberty Insurance Company, 41st and Broadway. You saw Officer Walton killed? I saw a man. His name, I, I didn't know he was killed. You heard the shots? Well, yes, but it was all so fast. Just that what did you see? Well, like I said, I, I was walking down the street. To work? Uh, yes, Liberty Insurance We've Company. We've got that. Uh, oh, yes. You were walking? Uh, yes, and, and I, I heard this noise. The shots? Yes, but I didn't know it at the time. It was just a loud noise, but it made me jump, and I looked. You just jumped, Mr. Yes, Phillips? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, then I saw this guy grab his stomach and fall flat on his face, and then I saw the guy with the gun. What did the guy it, with the gun look like, Mr. Uh, Phillips? Well, it all happened so fast. Well, Sergeant Otis showed you our rogues gallery. Did you see anybody who looked like him? No, 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 I didn't see anybody who looked like him. I didn't get a good look at his face. How tall was he? Uh, uh, tall. Like six feet? Yes, or close. What was he wearing, Mr. Phillips? Uh, brown suit and a uh, hat, brown hat. Stocky? Uh, well built? Yes. Anything else, Mr. Phillips? Uh, yeah, no, no, Thank that's you, Mr. All. Phillips. We may want to talk to you again. Don't leave town on a business trip or anything. Oh, I, I can go? Good day, Mr. Phillips. Thank you again. Oh, any time. Oh, uh... If you ever need any insurance, Lieutenant... Uh, Liberty, Liberty Insurance, insurance Company, Company. Uh, I'll remember. Yeah, well, so long. Cigarette? Thanks. We still work pretty well together, Rick. Why don't you come back on the force? Uh, Lieutenant. There's your answer, Walt. What is it, Hammerhead? Well, I, uh, I went over and talked to Fisher. He told me Bill Walton was working on a narcotics case, but he had no leads. Stuff's been flooding the city. Bill must have picked up a lead and got shot for it. Well, that's all, Otis. Mm, Fisher doesn't know anything else. Uh, Walton just started on the job. You got some more witnesses? Uh, yeah, a lady, uh, Mrs. Margaret Walker. Okay, you can come in. Thank oh, you. Come in, Mrs. Walker. Take yes. a chair. Thank you. Anything else? No. This is Mr. Diamond, Mrs. Walker. How do you do? How do you do, Mrs. Walker? Do you work, Mrs. Walker? All the time. I'm a housewife. You saw the officer killed? Oh, yes, but I didn't know it was an officer. He wasn't in uniform, you know. Would you mind telling us just exactly what you saw? Well, it all happened so fast... I was standing on the corner and uh, just... What corner, Mrs. Walker? Why, the corner where the poor man got shot, of course, 51st and Broadway. Just standing, Mrs. Walker? Young man, the traffic was very heavy. I was waiting for the signal. Sorry? I just want you to understand, I don't usually just stand around on street corners. Uh, go ahead, Mrs. Walker. <clears throat> well, I was standing there and I noticed an old man selling pencils. An going... old man? Yes, he was blind. Hey, Pop Scholes. Did time about 15 years ago for and peddling junk. I... Yeah, that's right, he did. <laughs> I don't know what all this talk is about. But if you don't want to hear my story, oh, I'm I... sorry, Mrs. Walker. Of course we want to hear your story. Please go ahead. Look, well, Walt, I... I just remembered something. I was supposed to see a client in an hour, and the hour is just about up. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, Walt, but this is business. Now, you wait a minute. I... I'll talk to you later. <clears throat> well, I never... Now, that's only because you don't have any friends named Diamond. All right, Mrs. Walker. Go on with your story. I went out of that station like Noor in the stretch. The minute the little old lady had mentioned a blind beggar, I remembered Pop Scholes in my office, and I grew the biggest hunch of my career. Something had really been bothering Pop, and a cop killing could have been it. I grabbed a cab, and 20 minutes later, I was standing in front of an old weather-beaten shack at the end of River Street. Who 
is it? Diamond. Oh, wait a second. Am I late? Uh, look, Mr. Diamond. Uh, Rick. Uh, yeah. Uh, look, Rick, I'm sorry you came all the way down here, but, well, I... You think... wanted some help, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did. Mm, you did. Well, you could at least ask me in. Oh, oh sure, sure. I- I'm sorry, but, y- you see, I don't need no help now. No? Well, you seem pretty worried about something when you came up to my office an hour ago. Well, I was, but it's all straightened out now. Is that right? Hmm. Hey, uh, I didn't know you smoked cigars, Pop. What? One in your ashtray here. Pretty expensive for you, Pop. Oh, well, you see, I, uh, I, I kind of splurge now and then. Come on, Pop. Somebody been here and changed your mind about talking to me? No, that's my cigar. What makes you say a thing like that? There was a cop killed right in front of you today, Pop. A good friend of mine. What's that got to do with me? I'm going straight. He was after somebody who's been peddling junk. I don't touch this stuff anymore. I don't go near it. Don't you, Pop? No, I put it down 15 years ago. You did time for it, too. Sure, and lost my eyes in stir. You think I want to go back to that? You think I'm a fool? There's a car pulling up out in front. That should be the law. I didn't do nothing. I swear I didn't. Better tell me quick. Who's throwing his weight around, Pop? I had nothing to do with that cop killing. I'm clean. You can't prove a thing. Come on, open up. It's the police. You're sure you don't want to tell me anything? No, I got nothing open to up, tell. Open Bust it in, Pop. Come on in. It's open. Okay, Pop. You're coming. I hey. might have known it. Why didn't you wait for me, Rick? Oh, believe me, Walt. I had an appointment with Pop. That's right, Lieutenant. He did. Oh, sure. Talk over old times, huh? Otis, take Pop out to the car. Come on, Pop. Sorry I got you in trouble, Rick. Forget it. Ah, just what have you two been stewing up? What did he tell you? He was showing me how to throw darts in the dark. Oh, that's a pretty bad one. Yeah. What did Mrs. Walker tell you about, Pop? I don't know why I should tell you. Well, don't be so grouchy. I've just been trying to find the guy who killed Bill. Pop's had it pretty tough already. I thought maybe I could make it easier than having you third degree him all over the office. Well, you sound like I'm going to use a hose on him. But the way you're burning up, you'll probably hit him with Sergeant Otis. No, I'm going home. Now, wait a minute. What for? To watch you blow up like Old Faithful? Mrs. Walker told me she saw some guy walk up to Pop like he was going to buy some pencils. Then another man busted through the crowd. That was Bill. Grabbed this guy with Pop. The guy pulled a gun and shot Bill, and then he beat it. Mm. Did Mrs. Walker give you a description of the killer? Sure. Short, dark, just the opposite of the one the insurance man gave us. The only thing that fits, they both said the killer wore a hat. Oh, dandy. Uh, where are you going? Now, back to my office. Pop knows something, Walt. Don't work on him too hard. Okay. Now, uh, been over to Bill's family yet? Right after I get through with Pop. Oh, I'm sorry I got sore. So we all get sore. So what? I'll give you a call. I got back in my cab and headed for the office. On the way over, I kept trying to reason it out. Somehow Pop was mixed up in this thing, and he was scared stiff of something or somebody. I paid the cabbie off in front of the building and took the elevator up to my floor. I headed down the hall to my office, still thinking, still trying to put two and two together. That was a mistake I never could add. When I walked in, I was too busy to notice much. All I got was a whiff of cigar smoke. You fall easy, Shamus. Now let's see how you bruise. Shamus, I left a note for you. Read it when you wake up. Everything about a beating like that is so unpleasant. The first swat isn't so bad. It's hitting that cold floor and fighting to stay awake. When you start getting kicked around, that's the time to face facts and give it up. But you don't. You keep on working until your senses get kicked loose and the world comes down around your ears. You fight it because you think maybe you're not ever going to wake up again, and when you finally do, you wish you never had. Anyway, like I said, it's so unpleasant. Mm. Oh, okay, okay. <sighs> oh, well, that lamp was pretty silly anyway. All right, all right. 
Don't jump, but you're talking to a ghost. Rick? At the sound of the groan... What's the matter the... with you? Oh, that's a pretty good question. I don't know how to answer it without a head. What happened? Uh, somebody worked me over. Oh, and how they worked me over. You want me to send an ambulance? No, just a shovel. Hmm, what's this? What's what? There's something in the typewriter here. A note. I will have put my eyes in straight. Now, Rick, if you're hurt badly... Oh, I'm, I'm not hurt that bad, Walt. Well, what about this note? Hmm. Says, uh, lay off the cop killing. That's all. Oh, and, uh, yeah, look at this. Find something else? A uh, souvenir. Butt of a cigar in my ashtray. There was one just like it in Pop's place. Well, hang on to it. All right, sure. What about Pop? Won't tell us a thing. Well, I'm getting sick and tired of this. Now, I got an idea. Wait ten minutes and then take Pop back to his house. Look, Rick, if somebody knows you're working on this thing, they must have found out when you went to see Pop. Probably spotted you going in. They certainly must know that we picked up Pop, and if they think he told us anything, they'll sure try to get him. I know it, I know it, I know it. Now, you drive Pop home, pretend to leave, but don't. And what'll you be doing? I'll be inside when he walks through the door. Okay, but I hope you know what you're doing. So do I. Ten minutes, Walt. Okay, Pop, here you are. Thanks for driving me home, Lieutenant. That's okay. Good night, Pop. Good night, Lieutenant. Who's in here? Who is it? Chick! I know you're here. I can smell your cigar smoke. Chick, please, I didn't tell the law a thing. Chick, say something. Honest, I didn't crack. Look, look, if you want to get rid of me, okay, but not the girl. Please, I swear I didn't say anything to anybody. I'm an old guy. Go ahead, knock me off, but don't do anything to the girl. Please, Chick, I'll peddle your stuff for the rest of my life if you leave the girl alone. Chick! Relax, Pop. What? You're not... No, Pop. Diamond. Didn't like to do it this way, Pop. But that cigar. The guy who saw you earlier came up to see me. Left me a cigar, too, along with a few bruises. Well, you just about know everything. Who's the girl you're protecting? Pop? I can't tell you that. Who's Chick? I can't tell you anything. Look, Pop, a cop's been killed. A great guy with a wife and kids. Now tell me, who's Chick? I ain't going to say anything. If the girl is a reason you won't talk, Pop, I'll find her. And if it's the last thing I ever do, I'll make you both sweat. Well, I'm on my way. Wait a minute, Rick. All right. Go on. Okay. If you give me your word, you won't say nothing about what I'm going to tell you. I give you my word about nothing yet, Pop. Now tell me, and if I think it should be kept quiet, that's the way it'll be. I got a daughter, Rick. What? That's right. Right after I went to stir, my wife had a baby. My wife died, and the kid went to live with relatives. Rich relatives. He's getting a good home and good schools. She doesn't know about you? Panhandling, no. She don't know about me, and she ain't going to. Go on. Only one guy knew about her. My ex-partner, Chick Russo. He got away when they picked me up, and after 15 years, he comes back operating again. The guy with the cigar, huh? Yeah. Hmm. How did you figure? The stuff was in the pencils. He delivered it to me, and I'd pass it. Why would you pass it? Chick had me over a barrel. He told me if I didn't play along with him, he'd tell my daughter who her father was. I'd do anything to keep from ruining her life. Now, what about Bill Walton? Well, he, he was going to grab Chick, but Chick shot him. That's why I came to see you. I didn't want no part of a cop killing, but I couldn't say anything then because I had this stuff on me and I wanted to dump it. I didn't want to go back to stir. Then Chick came to see you here, huh? Threatened you. Told you to keep your mouth shut? Yes. Told me in plain words that if I cracked, he'd kill my little girl and me. That's why I froze on you. You going to say anything? About your daughter? No, Pop. Oh, thanks, Rick. No, I don't care what happens. Well, I do. This guy's still loose, and he's done a killing. I want him. I don't know where you can find him. He never said... Well, maybe I can find him. Take off your clothes, Pop. Take off my clothes? Yep, you're going to get yourself a new suit. I'm going out and see Lieutenant Levinson. I'll be right back. You sure you know what you're doing? No, but why spoil a good surprise? Rick. Where are you, Walt? Over here by the pier. What's that with you? That's Otis. Well, tell him to hide his tail. Some guy from Oklahoma's allowed to shoot him. Oh, that's very funny. Shut up, Otis. 
Okay. You seen anything, Walt? Uh, very quiet. Mm. Now, look. Here's the idea. I'm going down to 51st and Broadway and stand with Pop's clothes and dark glasses on. You what? From what Pop told me, Chick Russo will certainly try and get him. Chick Russo? Are you crazy? He's been out of circulation for 15 years. Well, I got a big flash for you. He's back. But at 51st and Broadway, I can't give you any protection. Russo could step out of the crowd and that's the end of it. Well, I'm counting on one thing. That he thinks I'm Pop. He knows Pop's blind, so he'll get in close to do it. Maybe even with a knife. You're crazy. Walt, Walt, not in front of Otis. Oh, that's all right, Diamond. Now, I'm going down to change clothes. And then you, Walt, drive me to the corner, let me off. Then beat it. I left Walt then and went back to Pop's shack. We did a quick switch, and finally the dapper Richard Diamond stepped out complete with torn trousers, sweatshirt, and sneakers. I carried his cane with a white tip and kept his old hat pulled down over the dark glasses. Well, I'll be darned. Yeah, he looks just like the old man. Now, yeah, let's go, Walt. Otis, you stay here with Pop just in case our pigeon doesn't go for the bait. Oh, Lieutenant, can Otis. I... Otis. Okay. Don't look so unhappy, Otis. Who knows, maybe I'll get shot. Oh, I gotta miss everything. Isn't he a dream? Okay, here you are, Rick. Thanks, Walt. Say good night, Pop, real loud. Okay. Uh, good night, Pop. Sorry if we caused you any trouble. Oh, that's all right, Lieutenant. Thanks for the lift. Here you are, my good man. Bless you. Piker. Well, I stood there for two hours, getting a few dimes and selling a couple of pencils, but nothing happened. Now and then I'd pull my arm down against my side and feel a nice little 38 in the shoulder holster. I kept moving from one foot to another to keep my legs from going to sleep. I was getting a first-hand example of the tough row poor old Pop had to hold. By 10.30, I was ready to give it up. Then I spotted the cigar. Bless you. For what, Pop? Cops driving you to work now, huh? That's enough. I'll take your arm and you start walking. I'll lead you. Chick! Chick, is that you? Shut up. Walk. All right, we're going in the building. Down in the basement for a little talk. And that's just what we did. Chick held onto my arm and led me into my own building and down into the basement. I could have taken him right there, but I kept remembering Bill Walton. So I let it go until just the right time. Okay, Pop. You know what's coming. Yeah, Chick. I know what's coming. Don't act much scared. I guess it ain't so tough for a blind man. You can't see it coming. You'd be surprised what I can see. See? <laughs> What did I tell you? Busted my arm. You hit me with that cane like you could see you hit me. You go for that gun, I'll break your fat skull. You ain't pop. No, Buster, I'm the fellow you gave the bruises to, just returning the favor. Boy, you dirty... Don't do it! <laughs> pop a spank. My shoulder. All right. Now let's go back up where we can find a cop. I oh, know, you're not gonna take me. Come back here, Russo. Stop, Russo! I've got a gun! Not the you, Shamus! <laughs> Skeptic. <laughs> Right here. Rick, it's Walt. Oh. Oh, did she fool wrong? Mr. Diamond Valley dead. Now, you stop that. I just had a long talk with Pop. Oh, is that right? Yeah, he said absolutely nothing. I still don't know where he figures in this thing. Would you mind telling me? Walt, anything Pop did was under duress. If it was illegal, I want to know about it. Yeah, and if it was illegal, Pop would stand a good chance going back to prison. He might. You better let the law decide that. You haven't got any proof. How could I? Everybody's dead, except you and Pop. Pop won't say anything? Not yet, he won't. Walt. Yeah? Die. 
Now, you wait. What in the world was that all about? Oh, that Walt. When he dies, he'll have the penal code written on his headstone. <laughs> but he's a good cop. And there he is again. I can't stand to let a phone ring. Oh, you'll get tired. Rick, I'll go crazy. I'll drown it out. Well, do something. I've got the lovely bunch of coke. It stopped. Oh, good. Well, don't you stop. That was pretty. Well, all right. Oh, I've got a lovely bunch of cookie nuts. There they are, standing in a row. Big one, small one, some as big as your red. Give them a twist, a flick of the wrist. That's what the showman said. Oh, I've got a lovely bunch of cookie nuts. Every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife, the idol of me life. Sing and roll a bowl, a ball, a penny, a pitch. Sing and roll a bowl, a ball, a penny, a pitch. Sing and roll a bowl, a ball, a penny, a pitch. Roll a bowl, a ball. Roll a bowl, a ball. Sing and roll a bowl, a ball, a penny, a pitch. Hi there, you are, my lad. Step right up here. I got a lovely bunch of coconuts. There they are, all, all up, stand up in a great big row. I got big ones and small ones, some of them as big as your blasted head. Yeah, you give them a twist and a flick of the rest. Oh, what lovely fun. I've got a lovely bunch of nuts. Every ball you throw will make me rich. There stands me wife, the idol of me life. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Roll a ball, a ball. Roll a ball, a ball. Sing and roll a ball, a ball, a penny a pitch. Oh, my dear. How was that, honey? Oh, wonderful. Oh, darn. Yes, Walt? Helen, you put Diamond on the line. It's Walt, dear. Oh, never mind him. Come here, honey. Oh. Hello. Hello. Helen, did you hang up? Helen, put Rick on this phone. Hmm. This is Fu Wong. Missy Diamond, not so very dead. Bye. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Ed Begley played Lieutenant Walt Levinson. Also in the cast were Wilms Herbert, Francis Robinson, Larry Dobkin, Ann Morrison, and Charles Seal. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Tonight's show was written by Blake Edwards and directed by Russell Hughes. Dick Powell currently may be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. This is Eddie King inviting you to be with us next Sunday at this same time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Later today on most of these NBC stations, you'll want to hear two great stars, Kirk Douglas and Walter Houston, in the Theater Guild on the Air presentation of Heaven Can Wait, This is the comedy fantasy which you may have seen as the motion picture, Here Comes Mr. Jordan. It's a great comedy, yours for the listening, today on Theater Guild on the Air. And for another fine mystery program today on NBC, listen later to The Adventures of Sam Spade, as Sam slams his way through another of his amusing and mystifying capers. Hear the lovely duet from Madam Butterfly on Harvest of Stars, next on NBC.